any animal with recurrent lameness should have the specific cause diagnosed. You could have, for example, an old dog with gross swelling of the hock, with limited movement in the joint and with crepitus in the joint, all suggestive of a chronic osteoarthritis. However, unless you fully examine the limb, you might miss uh, pain and swelling higher up over the femur, and so the, the correct diagnosis of osteosarcoma might be missed altogether. Obviously, cases of hind leg lameness or spinal injuries or spinal disease should be uh, examined in a routine fashion and it's worthwhile spending some time uh, developing a routine approach to the examination of such cases. This diagram of a dog's chest shows the position of the heart and lungs. Let's think about where to listen for the valvular sounds in the dog and cat. The mitral valve is heard loudest over the fifth intercostal space on the left at the level of the costochondral junction. The aortic valve is heard round about the fourth intercostal space on the left, slightly higher than the mitral, level with the point of the shoulder. And the pulmonic valve is also heard paradoxically on the left, just under the axilla at the second intercostal space. On the right, the tricuspid valve is usually heard loudest over the fourth intercostal space, again at the level of the costochondral junction. We'll start then by considering lesions of the chest. Now, chest problems are very common in both the dog and the cat. And undoubtedly the commonest problem we see in the dog is endocardiosis of the mitral valve. This may also affect the tricuspid valve, but the basic lesion is a distortion of the valve so that it does not seat properly within the lumen. This condition usually is seen in dogs over the age of seven, but in the Cavalier King Charles can occur as young as three years of age. These cases normally present with a loud pansystolic murmur over the fifth intercostal space on the left, round about the level of the costochondral junction. We use the term pansystolic to describe a murmur which is occurring between the first and second heart sounds, i.e. between the lub and the dub. Other clinical signs associated with this lesion are coughing, especially at night, and ascites. Other forms of edema do occur, especially of the hawk, but ascites tends to be the commonest lesion we note. And of course the other sign owners will note is the presence of exercise intolerance. Moving on to other heart lesions, we'll consider congenital lesions. Now, it's tremendously important that the veterinary surgeon thoroughly clinically examines any puppy presented for vaccination. The reason for this is that congenital heart lesions are very common in the dog and you have a responsibility to your client to detect congenital lesions in the pup. And this is even more important with clients becoming more and more litigation minded these days. Going on to consider specific congenital lesions, one of the commonest is undoubtedly the ventricular septal defect, which results in a murmur giving a loud systolic murmur over the mitral valve on the left and on the tricuspid on the right, which gives rise to this classic diagonal murmur across the chest of almost equal intensity on both sides. Probably the second commonest lesion we see is patent ductus arteriosus, where the remnant of the ductus arteriosus fails to close after birth. The lesion in this case is heard loudest over the aortic valve and this leak results in a continuous machinery murmur which produces a loud noise in both systole and diastole. It's a characteristic murmur. Despite the fact that you get this very loud murmur with this condition, it's important to auscultate at the correct area because even if you're slightly off the aortic valve area, it can be difficult to hear the murmur even although it sounds so loud over that particular area. 
It is important that you appreciate this continuous machinery murmur because these cases are amenable to surgery, provided they're caught early enough and signs of heart failure have not developed. Third lesion we'll talk about <coughs> is subaortic stenosis, which is usually heard uh, over the same area as a patent ductus arteriosus, but this time it's a systolic murmur, not a continuous machinery murmur. And there is a suggestion, certainly from America, that this disease is very common in retrievers. Moving forward in the chest, pulmonic stenosis is also recorded as a congenital condition due to narrowing of the outflow from the pulmonic valve. Once again, it's a systolic murmur heard over the area of the pulmonic valve. Most of the murmurs we've already mentioned do tend to be systolic murmurs, and in actual fact, diastolic murmurs are uncommon in both the dog and the cat. We mentioned mitral incompetence as an acquired problem due to endocardiosis, but a similar condition does occur as, an as a congenital condition, i.e. mitral incompetence, and once again, one hears a systolic murmur, loudest over the area of the fifth intercostal space. A normal finding on auscultation of the dog chest is sinus arrhythmia. This refers to a regular irregularity on auscultation of the heart. What is happening is that there is a regular speeding up and slowing down of the heart. When you listen to these cases, uh, there are two options. Firstly, the animal may appear to be actually dropping beats. So when you listen to the chest, you'll hear lub dub, 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 a regular irregularity. A second form is that the heart rate may speed up and slow down, so that when you listen to these chests, that uh, there is a regular speeding up and slowing down. Lub dub, 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 lub dub. This is a normal finding in the dog and many clinicians consider this to be a sign of a healthy heart. Sinus arrhythmia is not normally noted in the cat. An exaggerated form of sinus arrhythmia seen in the dog is so-called vasovagal syncope, which is much commoner in brachycephalic dogs. In these cases, as I say, it's an exaggerated form of sinus arrhythmia and the animal will actually drop beats so that you have a perfectly healthy normal dog seems to exercise normally but every now and then because of the irregularity of the heart the animal faints after a short period of time usually just a few seconds the animal recovers and is perfectly normal dogs do experience actual dysrhythmias and it's worthwhile mentioning a few dysrhythmias but before we do that I emphasize a normal finding is that the dog often has a, a rapid heart. If you read the textbooks, they state that the dog's heart rate should be around about 80 to 90 a minute. In a practical point of view, on the consulting room table, it's very uncommon to get even large dogs with a heart rate of less than 100. Uh, and with puppies, it's not uncommon for them to be up at 150, 160 when you examine the puppy on the table. So beware of attaching undue significance to tachycardia. True irregularities do occur, and one of the commonest is atrial fibrillation. This occurs when there is a breakdown in communication between the SA node, which controls the rhythm of the heart and the rate of the heart, and the contraction of the ventricles. So you get an important finding in these cases of a so-called pulse deficit. If you auscultate the dog's chest, you may hear a heart rate of somewhere like two to 300 a minute. On the other hand, if you feel the pulse, this may only be 50 to 60 a minute. And this is because the impulses originating from the SA node are not getting through to the ventricle each time. And so you have this discrepancy. This condition can result from a damage to the conduction within the heart or secondary to cardiomegaly. So in other words, it may be a secondary finding to valvular endocardiosis. Atrial fibrillation, we mentioned just now, is associated with a form of heart disease particularly seen in giant dogs, that is, cardiomyopathy. In these cases, the lesion is actually within the heart muscle itself, 
and these dogs will present with clinical signs very young, around about two to three years of age. Uh, and the clinical signs are usually those of, of classic heart failure, which we mentioned earlier, under endocardiosis. Moving on to the cat, there is little doubt that heart disease has been grossly underdiagnosed in the cat in the past. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, most clinicians have been looking for similar types of changes to those recorded in the dog. And in actual fact, valvular disease is comparatively uncommon in the cat. What we do see are two distinct forms of cardiomyopathy, which result in rather specific clinical changes. And the second reason that these cases have been underdiagnosed is a failure to appreciate the clinical changes that develop. In the cat, they rarely present with coughing and discites, but instead usually present with difficulties in breathing because you have the development of a pleural effusion within the chest which can result in dyspnea. So this has led to underdiagnosis of heart disease within the cat. If we look at this radiograph we can see that the lung lobes are pushed away from the chest wall and appear to be leafed because of the presence of fluid within the chest. And similarly, this scalloped line, which is obvious on ventral chest, is fluid against the sternum. Another change commonly associated with cardiomyopathy in the cat is the presence of emboli. The most dramatic presentation of this is the so-called saddle thrombus, where a thrombus develops at the bifurcation of the aorta, resulting in occlusion of the pulse to both hind legs. This lack of pulse is obviously, clin is obviously clinically appreciable, and another sign associated with this is spasm of the gastrocnemius muscle. Let's look at the normal area for auscultation of the lungs in the dog and cat. This area extends from a point behind the shoulder to somewhere near the tenth rib and down to a point about two-thirds the way down the thorax. In the dog, one hears soft inspiratory sounds and virtually no expiratory sounds. As lesions increase, so the expiratory sounds become louder until one hears harsh inspiratory 